Okay, the, the next one we're going to look at, um, we already done with the F equal to MA uh, method in fully developed laminar flow. So the next one we'll look at uh, nervous stroke equation. However, nervous stroke equation, uh, if you're interested, you can go and read the whole chapter in chapter six of this book. Uh, I just uh, touch and go for this section, right? Because it's, uh, is a very complicated equation, as you can see on the screen here. So at least uh, in this module, you've seen never stroke equation before. Okay, so never stroke equation is the one that you see on the screen here. It's very lengthy equation, and you have all the partial differential equation. Basically, it link up what happened to the velocity vector in x direction y direction and w direction okay the process of derivation to this three equation is uh, very lengthy it will take maybe one or two one to two session just to explain this three equation however uh, i will just let you know the final answer or when we talk about nervous stroke equation this is these are the three equation that we're referring to three axes if you're referring to x direction flow, you use this equation. If you're re referring to y direction flow, you use this equation. If you're referring to z direction, you use this equation. Okay. And this one, as you can see here, is x, y, z, or we call it rectangular coordinate. Uh, Nervous stroke equation also can define in cylindrical polar coordinate. But as you can see here, the axis, even though they are x, y, and z, However, the location are defined by theta and r from the axis alone. So in here, you will be seeing uh, v, r, v, theta, v, z. So you are looking at three axes. One is in term of location from the axis r, the theta from x-axis theta, and another one is from the z direction from z here. Okay. So you can see there's a changes of format for the nervous stroke equation. Also another uh, lengthy process to, to go through the derivation, but I don't think we have time to go through. But for this session, I will just give you the final uh, equation for nervous stroke equation. At least you've seen, uh, you've seen them before. Huh? Okay. Uh, the next one will be some of the equation that when you come across nervous stroke. So, for example, if in the uh, another two semester when you did your when you do your FIP project, you need to use ANSYS software, you need to use simulation software that deal with fluid analysis. Then most of the time you will come across nervous stroke equation. All right, you deal with the dot product and so on. So you, you'll be seeing the continuity equation can be written as the top one. Uh, delta dot V equals zero, meaning there's a no losses of mass. Conservation of mass can be defined by this simple equation. And another one is a mo momentum equation that can be derived in the second equation. V divided by T plus the conservation of mass times the V, we become momentum because momentum, you know, that is mass times velocity. So mass times velocity equal constant and you have the all the parameter here. Um, so again, as you learn in chapter two, when you have a steady flow, something, the velocity that is linked with the time, especially on the control volume, uh, dimension, you can cancel and become zero. Okay. Uh, this is all right. The detail you can read from the slides. Yeah, I just touch and go on the nervous stroke. Okay. Okay. So these are all about nervous stroke equation for fully developed flow. Another one is that uh, you can prove. A fully developed laminar flow using the fourth approach, which is using dimensional analysis. So this dimensional analysis, 
uh, you learn about this one in your last chapter of 3179, right? In your introduction to fluid mechanics, all right? So, um, okay, so this is one of your chapter in 3179. So if you already forget this one, or maybe I'm not sure whether other lecturer got teach you or not this one. So if you're not, then you need to recall or go and find textbook about dimensional analysis because this is part of your introduction to the mod, uh, to fluid mechanics, which is, should be covered in 3179 module. Okay, last chapter. And usually this one is one of the final, final exam question. All right. So I'm not going to go into detail on uh, dimension analysis, so you can read through my slides. It just means that uh, when you deal with a fully developed laminar flow, there are four import, uh, five important parameter, pressure, vol, uh, velocity, length, diameter, and viscosity. And you do the analysis as you can follow through the slides. I give you the step here. You just follow through. All these steps are repeated uh, same approach as you learned in 3179, our last chapter of your introduction to fluid mechanics. Okay, you just follow through. Okay, you read through uh, for these types. All these are the same steps that you learn. So at the end, you arrive at an uh, equation called Darcy friction factor. Later, we will re revisit this one again. Uh. You will get one important uh, equation. So this slide is important. All this uh, equation is important where you deal with the F. So this session will deal with the loss of loss inside pipe that you start studying about losses in pipe, uh, which is the F itself. Okay. So F, how you define F, which is the losses inside the pipe. There are two equations that you can use. One is delta P times D divided by L divided by dynamic pressure, which is half rho V square. Okay, this term alone is called dynamic pressure. Dynamic pressure. Okay, half rho V square. Uh, and F equal to 64 divided by RE, this one is for laminar flow. If you're having a laminar flow inside pipe, you can straight away use F, F equal to 64 divided by Reynolds number. So since this be beginning of this chapter, I already told you how to calculate Reynolds number. There's an equation for that. So if a laminar flow, you want to calculate uh, inside a pipe and inside a pipe is mentioned, you're having a fully developed flow inside a pipe, and you need to find the friction inside a pipe, you can use this equation, F equal to 64 divided by R E, Reynolds number. And there's also, there's a delta P that we defined previously. So if you substitute the Reynolds number uh, and so on, there's another equation you can use with this at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, if you substitute the delta P, this one inside here, you can arrive at this equation. So the top one, if you need to find the flow inside pipe at the laminar flow, you straight away either you use Reynolds number, if you manage to find Reynolds number, you use the first equation. If you do not have Reynolds number, if you don't have uh, sufficient information to calculate Reynolds number, then uh, you need to look for alternate uh, method, which is you need to look at the, sh the wall at the sh shear, shear stress at the wall, the density and the velocity of the flow. Okay, there are two equations you can use to find friction of inside the pipe, and then friction of the pipe can influence the drop of pressure. Okay, you need to find drop of pressure. So later we will look at the influence of friction inside the pipe and how it affect the drop of pressure. And since this chapter, we keep keep saying that when you know the changes of pressure at point one and point two, the delta P, you know the direction of the flow. So uh, once you know your friction, you can calculate your friction inside pipe, 
then you can go ahead and continue with the previous step that we learned. You find the delta P, from delta P, you know the direction of the flow, either it go up or go down or so on, okay? Uh, okay, now we come to the, uh, the chapter or the section that I think is important. Uh, later, you will see the same equation also. When you study about uh, friction inside a pipe, uh, this one is under uh, energy consideration, uh, or we will be using energy equation or binary equation if you if you want to, all right? And when we consider energy, we'll assume the flow is incompressible, steady. This too important when you want to use the equation that you see on the screen later on. This equation, if you want to use, make sure you're having, uh, this is a general equation for, uh, this is the energy equation when you study about pipe. So the yellow box here, link up with the diagram on the left hand side. So you have all the parameter there. So P1 divided by mu, this is the uh, sp specific gravity, right? So P1 over mu is actually the height of the water from reference point one, as you can see from the diagram. So if you fill this pipe, you can measure the pressure by uh, looking at the length or the distance from the center of the pipe. This is center of the pipe, huh? center of the pipe, because we know the center of the pipe have the maximum velocity. So center of the pipe have no friction and you always, always have the optimum uh, condition. So we are measuring from the center to that point at point one. So the first one you're referring to this one. Second one is if you look at the, the the sign here, this one actually is the uh, kinetic energy portion. Uh, this one is the uh, pressure. Uh, this one is the elevation in the energy equation. Z1 is the elevation, as you can see from the diagram on the left. It's the elevation or the point from the ground. Okay, point from the ground and so on. So this equation is standard already. So also another important equation when you study about float mechanics. Um, when you need to consider energy equation, recall that you, you've seen these slides before and use this equation in your answer. Okay, write P1 divided by mu and so on. And if you're having a uniform flow, if the question inside there is uniform flow, which is normal for this module, if you see uniform velocity mentioned in the question, your alpha equal one, meaning this one one, this one is one, okay? Uh, alpha two also one. However, when you have a non-uniform, then your alpha will be more than one. This value you can determine from experiment. Okay. What is the focus of this second session will be the HL. HL, we call it heat loss. HL. What mean by heat loss? As you can see from the diagram here, when you have a flow from point one to point two, the height of the water in the capillary here, there's a dropping of water level, All right? There's a dropping of water level or there's a dropping of pressure here due to the friction. We will define this phenomena or this parameter as HL. There's an energy loss with the flow. So later we'll look at equation for HL. Yeah, uh, this is the ideal case. So if you have an inviscid case, so when you solve question, there will be one particular section that we specially designed to let you to score some marks. For example, we will section B or section C or even section D, we will see something like assume. 
assume the flow is in BC. Okay, in BC. Calculate something. Calculate something. It means you use this equation by assuming alpha 1, 1, alpha 2, 1, and you cancel HL. There's no heat loss. There's no heat loss in the pipe. It means you're having an inviscid flow. Okay, so this is a, just a bonus mark just to test whether you understand what is inviscid. All right. Next will be um, since you have an ideal case means that the velocity will be the same. Okay, you have an incompressible, you have the steady flow, means velocity at point one and point two is the same. So when you same, you can cancel their component inside this equation. Because alpha one and alpha two same, velocity is same because you have a steady flow. So the energy equation can reduce to this form. Okay, you rewrite the equation, you get P1 divided by gamma or sigma plus Z1 minus and so on. You get your H1, HL. Right. Then um, if you have a slanted pipe huh, previously, uh, just I think 10 minutes or, or 30 minutes ago, we teach you there's a differential between the horizon pipe and the slanted pipe with the angle. So in this case, if you compare the diagram on the left, we actually have a slanted pipe with the angle. So if you have an angle, then you use this kind of equation. There's something happened to the pressure there. So pressure equal to gamma, uh, uh, specific gravity, length, sine theta divided by and so on. Okay. So I'll give you the sign here. P1 equal to P2 uh, and so on. So your HL equal to this one. Okay. Later we'll revisit this one. Z1, Z2, how you find the differences of this one? You use sine relationship. This is the L. Okay, this is L. So this is your delta Z. Oh, no, sorry. Your delta Z, this one. Delta Z, theta. So actually you're having a sign relationship. You have your Z, you have your L, you have a theta, 90 degree. So you're using sign. And in this case, you can see P1 equal to P2 plus delta P. So in this case, you know that this delta P is negative. Because the, you see the arrow, the arrow is flowing from the left to right. And uh, the question I keep asking Ku is that how you know the flow direction? Okay, so if you can see the arrows from left to right, so your point one must be higher than point two. So if you look at this mathematical equation, straight away you know that this component is negative because P2 is less than P1. Okay. Something like that. And there's an equation that you see on the screen, how you find the uh, shear loading and so on. So uh, if you want to find the losses in the pipe, there are two equations you can use that on the screen here. First, you use this one or this one. Okay. So the first one is the normal shear. But however, the second one is with the W means you're looking at the wall shear stress. This one is a normal shear. Normal shear. So if the question gives you the wall shear, then you use the second one. And look at the diagram here. It means that uh, one use small r, one use uh, capital D, okay? diameter. 
and you can look at this tutorial question uh, when you have time. So I'm not going to go through this uh, tutorial question. Uh, treat it as your homework. Just read through the slides. Okay, just read through the slides. Uh, don't worry about the unit because th this one is imperial unit. Uh, the question is in imperial unit. So don't worry about the unit, but the steps or, or the principle that you use to solve this one question is the same. Uh, I cannot find a, a unit SI sample. So this is the one that I find that's suitable for you to understand the, the, the equation, how you apply the equation, All right? Yeah. Okay, so treat this one as your homework. Eh? Go and look, look through what is this tutorial about. Next, we're going to look at, uh, we have cleared the laminar flow. Now we look at turbulent flow. Okay. So again, how you define the type of the flow, the keyword is Reynolds number. Okay, remember magic number 2100, 4000. If less than this one, let me know. More than 4000, turbulent. Between this one is transition. Okay, so this graph explains everything. If you are lamina, if you can see the velocity here, you are plotting velocity versus time. So if you are ha having a lamina, means that you can see that the, the velocity is increasing linearly in this case. And then there's a changes of uh, velocity and there's a fluctuation of velocity. Okay. This is the further uh, diagram to explain the turbulent behavior. Just look through. Uh, so it means that um, the, the diagram on the left is a laminar flow with a shear stress. And the right hand side is the one with uh, turbulent uh, behavior. We call it uh, turbulent eddies. Turbulent eddies means a small rotation of flow inside the liquid. Uh, it's like stirring, stirring action inside the, the flow there. Okay. Next, I'm going to uh, discuss about uh, equation. And this equation, uh, we're going to uh, teach you an equation called, let me show you first the end result. We're going to teach you what is a Tessy formula. Okay, why Tessy formula is important because this one is part of your uh, learning outcome. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you how to derive the equation, uh, like what we did previously, okay? So let's look at uh, a dimension, uh, a pipe. In this case, you're seeing the pipe is slanted at a certain degree with the theta here. And if you look at the diagram, okay? Just test whether you understand huh? before I, I, I mention anything. Do you understand why this arrow is pointing this way? Do you understand this pressure pointing this way? Ask yourself. Huh? If you don't understand, stop me and ask me to explain. Do you understand why pressure pointing to this area? Why pressure pressure times A is a force? Huh? So this one basically is a free body diagram that deal with force. So, okay, you have the length. You have a theta in this case. My question is, by looking at this arrow, okay, by looking at this arrow, huh, what is the direction of the flow? What do you think? In this case, you, do, you, you, you don't know the pressure parameter. I mean, you don't know the pressure value. In this case, you just look at the direction of the arrow here. What is the direction of the flow? What, and what do you think? Shirley, you want to try to explain? What is the direction of the flow? By looking at the shear building. The, the direction down. of the flow uh, oh. is going down. Flow is going down, why? 
Because the friction is going up. Yes. Okay. The answer is, if you look at this shear direction going up, shear always go opposite of the flow. Huh? Shear, this one, this, this, this uh, term, huh? shear always opposite of flow. Huh? So if you look at this arrow, the flow is flowing from the top to bottom. Okay, so I just recall one term, one term that we use, uphill and downhill. Dinesh, are you there? This yellow, this yellow arrow here tell you which one. Is the flow is flowing uphill or downhill? Downhill, sir. Downhill, correct. Huh? So these are all the sensitive words that you will see in the question in your test or final exam. Okay. As usual, when you derive equation, we assume flow uniform and steady. So what mean by steady means acceleration A is zero. Okay. Because we are using F equal to MA equation. So later all the force inside the free body diagram will be zero. Um, recall what is momentum, right? Momentum equal to MV. Uh, in this case, we look at the forces first, huh? although here is the momentum. Momentum equation actually uh, is a force. Huh? It is a force equation, like what we discussed in chapter two. So if you look at the diagram on the left and we write in all the force equal to zero, P1A positive, why this one negative? By looking at the arrow, because your reference axis is here. Let's say your x axis positive is going down because the flow is flowing from the flowing down here. So that's why P2 is negative. Then this one also negative because direction opposite of the axis. And this one, when you see W something, it means you consider gravitational force. Why that got why? why there's a W component here beside gravitational force. Ask yourself, why gravitational force happening in pipe? Because you slanted the pipe or you oriented the pipe. When there's an angle between the horizontal theta, either the one on the left or right, every time you, you turn a pipe, to a certain degree, gravitational force going to happen vertically. That's why in this case, we will have a W sine theta in this case. So there's a water uh, coming down. And here, stress here, stress is the stress, right? It's a shear stress. But the, the word stress can tell you the equation of the shear stress. Okay, S H E A R shear stress is force divided by area. So we want to find in forces. So force equal to shear stress times area. How you get area in this case? We take the length times the perimeter of the pipe. Why? Because shear is happening at the wall. You having a wall, and shear is happening at this region. So how you find, how you convert the stress to force, you stress times the area that it touch. So this is the area that it touch, cylindrical area. So how you calculate cylindrical area? You take the perimeter, you see the special symbol that I use in these slides. This P special symbol is perimeter of the pipe. How you calculate perimeter? is that you take 2 pi r of this circle, 2 pi r times the length, you get area. Okay, Parameter times length, you get area. Area times shear stress, you get uh, shear forces. Okay. How you calculate the mass of the water, you take density, times volume times gravity, okay? You know that 
uh, W weight is mg. So how you find the weight of the, for example, the fluid, let's say you take water. So how you get the M? M you take rho times volume. Density times volume, you get M. M times G, you get weight. So that's why you take the area, how you calculate volume, you take the area times the length. This is your pipe. How you get the volume of this pipe? You take area times the length to get volume. Sign, you read from the diagram here, you get a negative Z divided by L. Okay. Why negative? Because Z is going down. It's going down. Huh? That's why there's a negative sign there. Your positive axis is going up. In this diagram, your Z is going down. So you measure from the origin, go down negative. Next, further, you this you rearrange and then you take out try to take out the a and l inside the equation. You will get this equation. The first one you will be divided by l. This one also divided by l. This one divided by l. This one divided by l. Okay, you arrive at this equation. The first term of this equation, we call it pressure drop in the piezometric head. Okay. This term, we call it piezometric head drop per unit length because you divide it by L. And then this one, perimeter, this is not pressure, this is perimeter. Perimeter divided by area, oh sorry, uh, the, the inverted uh, area divided by perimeter is called hydraulic mean depth, or we'll use M later on. Okay, so to convert into hydraulic mean that we use M equal to A and P, we're going to change something in this equation. So you move the P down, so you can write shear equal to A divided by P like this. So you can write shear divided by M because M equal to A divided by P. So you can, this, can change this one to uh, shear divided by M. Right, so uh, another mathematic model, the shear stress can be written as M times the differential of your pressure. Uh, not pressure, this one is the uh, parameter. Right? In this case, this is parameter. Okay, this is a parameter. Then recall that you learn about friction in your 3179. Sear stress equal to friction times the rho. V hat means there's an average velocity. Square divided by two. Okay. Every time you see a, a mean or average velocity means we already converted parabolic flow inside pipe when we have a Fully developed, okay, fully developed flow into steady flow or uniform flow. This is uniform flow. Again, we already have a derived equation. Change this one to this one with V not V hat. Okay. Then you can rewrite the equation in this form. And further, you arrive at this one. Okay, so you move your M over here, become divide. And you know that uh, you can write, further simplify your, your equation of 
uh, this one to become HF. Rho G HFL. Okay, rho G HFL equivalent to rho uh, F. This is an important equation when you want to calculate heat loss. Okay, heat loss H or F. Huh? H F heat loss. Then uh, another equation you can look on the screen and you just follow along. So perimeter, uh, this uh, dp over dx will be this equation and so on. Huh? So for open channel, for open channel, there's something different from the equation. So you from open channel, uh, pressure p uh, in here will be constant so since constant it will be equal to zero if you differentiate over x will be zero and you only have rho gz over x if open channel huh? so recall since the beginning of this chapter i teach you to differentiate what is pipe flow and what is open channel the first slide of this chapter. So if you have open channel, you become this one and recall back what is the definition of dz by referring to the diagram on the left. You get a sine theta there. Again, uh, this is open channel case. Recall hf divided by l equal to sine theta or i. Okay, this is to calculate the slope of the channel. Recall the complex equation that you learned, I think, uh, two minutes ago. You have this equation. Substitute there. You can replace the further simplified equation to rho g and i. It means that, but you can still keep using this equation if you want. We just reduce this one to a further simplified equation. So you can find that your velocity, average velocity, by rearrange this equation, uh, our objective, one objective is to find for open channel flow, the velocity, average velocity can be calculated using this equation. Square root of 2g divided by f, f is the uh, friction inside the pipe, times the m, M we define just now. I is this one. M is this one just now. M is this one. Hydraulic mean that M. A divided by parameter. Okay. So by having all this, it means that if you want to calculate the average velocity for the open channel, for open channel, huh? you can use this equation and or you will, we will reach uh, a Chessy formula in the form of C square root of MI. This is a very popular equation when you study open channel design. Okay. So how this relate to your test and final exam? There will be one section that will ask you to compare pipe flow. After you analyze pipe flow, there will be one particular section, maybe D or E, in a long question. It will ask you, what is the differences if you are having open channel design. It means the keyword open channel design, trigger chassis formula, use, tri use this formula to calculate average velocity. Okay, so because why? Because part flow, you are having U max at the center, 
usually the question will ask you to compare Umax at the center of the pipe flow to the average velocity at the open channel pipe. Will it be the same? Or is there any differences? How many percentage of difference compared to pipe flow? Okay, again, Chessy formula is for open channel design. Okay, all right, so just take note. This is just as important as your pipe flow. Uh, we introduce you to a, a formula called Chessy formula given you by this short equation to calculate average velocity for an open channel design. Okay, take note. Huh? Of course, in exam, we won't, we won't mention the SESI formula. But when you see open channel design, you should be smart enough to recall your lecturer mentioned SESI formula before. And SESI formula is to calculate average velocity or you will see keyword mentioning average velocity more direct question average velocity in open channel design it means that the question asks you to use chessy formula okay these are all the hints uh. okay so what happened if the pipe is running full of fluid it may it become a, a pipe flow then the weathered parameter become uh, internal circumference of the pipe. So what mean, what does it mean? It means that um, because when you calculate the M earlier, the M is A divided by parameter. So if you have a fully loaded pipe, you use P equal to uh, 2 pi R for the parameter. For the parameter however for the open channel part your float only fill up let's say half of the pipe right so half of the pipe the parameter let's say uh, if the, the parameter fill up half of the pipe so half of the pipe it should be diameter this d plus a small diameter parameter of p1 here so you you fill half of the pipe. You want to find the parameter of the fluid to calculate the M. You take this one, D plus the half circle. Plus half circle, it means pi R. Because full circle is 2 pi R, divided by half, you get pi R. So this is the differences when you calculate full loaded uh, pipe flow and the opportunity flow when you need to find the M. Okay, so it means that you can use TESI formula to calculate flow pipe also, or pipe flow. Okay, pipe flow and open channel. The differences is the value of M. M, definition of M is area developed by perimeter. Perimeter here is the one that touched by the fluid or weathered. The, the keyword is weathered. Weathered means the, the fluid touching the area. Okay. Uh, so as you can see here, I do some calculation for you. If it's a full the full, full loaded uh, fluid pipe, or we call it pipe flow, then you can see the area will become pi d square divided by four. And the area, okay, sorry, uh, it should be area equal to pi d divided by four, pi perimeter equal to, yeah, correct. This one is area. For fully loaded, your pressure the, the perimeter is 2 pi r. Circle, right? Full circle, the perimeter. Full circle is 2 pi r. So 2 pi r, 2 r means diameter. 
two r two of your radius is diameter so pi r here so you rearrange this cancel the pi cancel the d you get d divided by four for fully loaded fluid okay try to read these slides again and again try to understand what is the differences between flow a uh, pipe flow which is a fully loaded pipe with water or fluid and open channel fluid like that both you can use SESI formula link you with c square root of m i c is given above okay so these are the area we can test you to find average velocity all right and so on so from here also we can derive the darcy westberg equation or darcy equation given by darcy westberg what is the application is to find the head loss in circular pipe. Okay, head loss in circular pipe, meaning if you see the question asks you about head loss, and sometimes I will help you by adding the darcy westberg equation. It means you look for this equation and solve using HF equal, you write HF equal to 4 FL divided by D, uh, Average velocity squared divided by 2g, meaning you are using the darcy weisberg equation to solve heat loss, the losses inside the pipe, HF. Okay. All right. So far, just to recap what is important for this second session is SESI formula. Darcy Weber equation, which is this one. What is M? What is average velocity by using SESI formula? Okay, make sure you know where to look for this one when it comes to test or your assignment or lab report. Okay. Okay, um, I think we will continue. Um, looking at uh, specific on heat loss uh, heat loss sorry heat loss they will in term of consists of major and minor heat loss in your next class okay so we stop our lecture here uh, go, make sure you go and uh, revisit the slides and the homework they ask you to do huh? okay let me stop the recording <laughs>